Hey guys, Dark Humility here. No, it's catch me. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Dark Humility for six to seven days a week of D2 RP2 vanilla D2 action. Of course, we have the hype of D2R's first ladder on the horizon. We still don't have a date yet. However, we have here the 2.4 PTR just a few days away on January 25th. And I am here to give you guys some awesome insights to how to make maximum use out of these new rune words that we have just come upon in the 2.4 patch notes and of course who have been revealed to us through various content creators over the past few days. How can we use these rune words you might ask? Well, I don't know. Some people might think they're totally worthless, but if you guys want some insights as to how to integrate these into useful builds and mercenaries, I will do my best. Of course, remember, you can always check out my build guides on d2.maxwell.gg and also on YouTube. We have a lot of video guides for all kinds of D2R viable builds. Anyway, let's get into it. So insight in a bow. What can you do with insight in a bow? You are most likely going to be using that on an Act 1 mercenary. An Act 1 mercenary has been buffed quite a bit by having also the utility of freezing arrow and maybe even more damage from explode, exploding arrow. I see freezing arrow um, taking kind of the place of holy freeze on an act two mercenary, uh, which is very good for crowd control. So instead of having holy freeze, maybe on an act two mercenary and insight on an act two mercenary, which is usually very good for uh, casters, you can use a bow who is maybe more likely to stand back with you. Um, and uh, you can put the bow insight on the bow mercenary, and you can get the freeze effect on top of the mana regeneration. I think that's going to be the best use of it. Uh, a lot of mana hungry builds that might be ranged builds, like elemental bosons, might even want to take advantage of that further um, because you don't put your active mercenary at risk. And then you can have double freezing arrow or you can have freezing arrow on top of your exploding arrow damage so you have the crowd control on top of massive damage from your own exploding arrow and you have the mana region um, from the insight on the act one mercenary and she's safe behind you and behind possibly your valkyrie so that's going to be probably one of the best uses of that and that's good stuff uh, it's gonna be nice to see act one mercenaries maybe more prominent but even before that even in the mid game you might find the Act 1 Mercenary dealing more damage with Exploding Arrow on top of giving you Mana Regen. And you might find it easier to find a 4-socketed Bow, perhaps, and a 4-socketed Poleaxe. So go for it at the start of Ladder. Smash it. All right. We've got Plague Rune Word up in here. Plague Rune Word has some very awesome stats on it. Uh, has a lot of negative enemy poison res type stuff, especially the lower resist, but it also has cleansing and it has enhanced damage, attack speed, deadly strike, increases target, and chance of open wounds and even skills. There's a lot of ways you can make use of this rune word. Um, I'd say one of the more interesting ways would be to use an Act 3 mercenary because Act 3 mercenaries can only use swords. If you slap this on an Act 3 mercenary, the plague sword. And then you can get the lower resist when he's struck, which can be great on casters. You can make use of any of those awesome abilities like Static of Field, Enchant, Large Damage from the Firebolt, or the Glacial Spike, Crowd Control on the Cold Act 3 Mercenary, on top of also never having, never being cursed, getting that curse immunity or near curse immunity by taking off curses very fast with that Cleansing Aura, um, on top of never having problems with poison damage. And you can slap it up, especially on elemental builds that maybe don't need conviction for infinity in the end game. You can also uh, make sure that um, you can use this for those types of builds as well. So like for instance, an elemental uh, charger that uses like uh, holy, holy shock rune words like dreams or the holy fire rune words like the dragons in the hand of justice. And then you use conviction on yourself and you don't need the conviction on the mercenary maybe you'll find this quite useful uh, for not being cursed not being decrept so you can always do maximum damage and never get slowed uh, there's definitely some very interesting potentials uh, with this kind of a rune word uh, for the act 3 mercenary in general of course you could still use it if you don't have infinity in the early and mid game 
um, when it's really expensive. Infinity's way more expensive than a Chamry, let's be real. Uh, you can definitely just jump into the monsters and still get that lower resist proc, and it can still do quite a bit for you. Maybe not quite as much as Infinity, but it can do quite a bit, and it can add to your damage. So those are the Act 3 Mercenary uses for it. I would say that's pretty solid stuff. Um, besides using it on all those kinds of elemental characters that don't use Infinity in the late game, and possibly taking advantage, of course, of the Cleansing Aura and everything else it has to offer for utility for those. We can also use it on poison damage builds themselves. So we can use this sword, we can put it like in a phase blade for fast attack speed, and we can use it on a rabies druid. Now a grief also can have a pretty similar negative enemy poison res. I think it's negative 20 to negative 25. Um, however, grief doesn't have plus skills, which also help rabies. It doesn't have the cleansing aura, which would cleanse off the amp. Amp is a pretty dangerous thing to uh, deal with on rabies uh, as you're trying to rabies one monster and spread it to other monsters amp can get you killed pretty easily um of course there's also the lower res when struck which will increase poison damage if you do get struck so getting struck might actually be a good idea here uh, you could potentially use it on a rabies druid and not even have max block on purpose if you want to maximize its damage which is pretty cool stuff um, you also have attack speed and you have enhanced damage. So the attack speed will make it more easy to apply the rabies and it means your physical damage on the weapon itself could also be pretty decent for leeching as well as well as the deadly strike which is double damage and freezing the target so the target can't retaliate upon using rabies. In a lot of ways this is almost the dream rabies weapon. Um, very cool stuff. Uh, negative enemy poison res, of course, will also increase the damage. It's all just amazing stuff. So the enemy, enemy poison res on top of the low resists and on top of all those damage modifiers. It's just too good. It's too good. Uh, you could also use it as a budget option for a poison necromancer, which is 100% valid considering you can get one to two skills on it and you get quite a bit of negative enemy poison resist. Uh, you can also use this on top of um you can also use this on top here of that and you'd be good so you can also use it on top of uh let's say like three piece trains and get even more negative enemy poison res um of course death web doesn't have fcr either neither does this but death web will give you potentially more skills so potentially gives you three skills or four skills so it's like three to four whereas this is one to two and of course death web is negative 40 negative 50 whereas this is negative 23. One advantage of this over Deathweb, though, besides not having quite as much damage, Cham is way more common than Deathweb, though. Deathweb is one of the most rarest items in the game, um, is that you have the Cleansing Aura. This can sometimes interfere with a stronger lower resist, but most of the time it's not going to matter much. If not, it's just a free lower resist. Um, but when it comes to the Cleansing Aura, the Cleansing Aura is nice, because on a uh, Poison Necro, you do tend to jump right in the middle of groups of mobs, and if you're amplified, um, that's going to cause you to take a ton of damage and potentially die. So if you're not amplified damage because the amp is taken off of you very fast from the cleansing aura, it can actually reward a very risky playstyle on a poison necromancer. Um, so not bad for any of those uses at all. Um, unfortunately, some other poison uses are not possible because it can only be made in a sword, but um, those are definitely the main ones that come to mind for me. Let's go over Pattern real quick. Pattern's pretty straightforward. Amazing early game uh, claw for the new martial arts changes for patch 2.4. Uh, you guys are definitely going to want to use this sucker coming into patch 2.4. And the new ladder, if you were playing a martial arts sin, you can even use two of them and take advantage of the faster block rate on claw block. So you can get two of these suckers. Get all this bonus elemental damage on top of whatever the charges do when they're expended with finishers in the martial arts tree. Uh, with the new rework to the finishers, you only lose one of each charge upon using a finisher instead of all of them. So you can definitely combo way more elemental damage way faster, even early game. And these claws provide all the right stats, defensive stats, uh, attack rating, which is usually lacking on those. Abilities they are improving those abilities attack rating in general, but it also helps to have more and 
in general, just applying even some flat damage for some potential leech. It's going to be amazing stuff for sure, and uh, it's going to be a very uh, awesome addition. So if you guys were ever thinking of playing a martial arts assassin on normal Diablo 2, on D2R, it's going to be coming in hot on the ladder. So this is an awesome option. This is what you're going to want to do if you want to run those martial arts sin builds and those martial arts sin approaches. Yeah, for sure. Next up, we have Unbending Will. Unbending Will, I'd say probably its best use is on an Act 5 Mercenary. Uh, especially if you want to take a more defensive approach with a combination of both Taunt and on Battlecry, uh, you can have a very easy time as a physical build side by side with your Mercenary, uh, not taking much damage from the monsters, which is usually just going to be a really good thing. It also gives it a lot of damage in general, and it could be ethereal on an Act 5 Mercenary, making that Act 5 Mercenary who's getting its damage buffed and survivability buffed extremely strong. I forgot to mention, but the Act 3 Mercenary also is getting its survivability buffed bigly, so it is going to be big, man. It's going to be big to use these rune words for some of these Mercenaries. Uh, it's basically like an obedience damage-wise, but for an Act 5 Mercenary, potentially, and that's big stuff. Now, the only major hurdle to this one is that, um, just like the pattern, the runes aren't insanely demanding. The most demanding rune is a foul. Also, Io and Hell. So there's a few somewhat interesting mid runes, but these runes are not hard to find. You can get them from Nightmare Forges for easy. You could get them from even Nightmare Countess in the case of Io and Hell, and you can even get foul for easily from hell count us but honestly forges tend to drop me foul all the time so you just gotta do some forges get some bad rng and get a foul rng piece of stuff um that's a story story of the forges man always a foul rng anyway easy stuff to get i'd say the main problem is the base it is a six socketed sword it has to be that leaves you with basically two options um, it leaves you with the uh, six socketed phase blade um, unfortunately phase blazes don't Fades blades don't take advantage of enhanced damage. They also can't be ethereal. So for an Act 5 Mercenary, that's a no-go. You're probably going to want that Colossus Blade, if possible. Six socketed Colossus Blade is definitely going to be the go-to. Uh, if you can find just a plain F Colossus Blade, though, you could large the socketed for six sockets. You can also use the socket recipe for weapons. Am, Ral, Perfect, Amethyst, and give it a shot. But you have a one six chance of getting those six sockets under those conditions um anyway larzak sockets uh larzak the larzak quest is automatic it's always the max number of sockets so you would get six no matter what which is pretty nice which means the base for this can be easier to acquire than oath it can be harder to find an oath base in some cases um, and since the runes are cheaper than oath as well it also makes it a pretty good option for mercenaries i'd uh, for an act by merc it's definitely better than oath though um the one problem, though, is that things like Lawbringer often outshine it when it comes to doing damage because Lawbringer has Decrepify. Decrepify also provides crowd control and at negative 50% physical res. So uh, Lawbringer definitely um, vies for this weapon's position. Lawbringer is also slightly harder to obtain uh, with a Lemonic O-Rune. Of course, it's also just three sockets, so there's a lot more three socket swords out there. So that could be the thing. That could be the problem with this for sure. Uh, however, my favorite idea of to actually using this sword on an actual build would be like a starter Berserk Barb. So uh, usually the way a Berserk Barb goes is you find an oath. So you got to get a four socketed uh, F elite sword. And then you would then go into grief. And anything before that was pretty crappy on Berserk because you just wouldn't do enough damage. But... The Berserk Barbarian can really make use of this. Um, taunt would lower the damage of the monsters trying to hit you, so even if you don't howl them all the way, they're not going to do as much damage if you get that Taunt proc, also the Battle Cry proc. I mean, sorry. Um, also, the Howl would howl everything else away except for the Elite. This would also lower the Elite's damage, so that's really good stuff. Usually on Berserk, you're trying to kill an Elite, and then you swap to MF gear or whatever, and then you pop them with item find or find item. 
You get that fine item on them, and then you get you get a chance at double loot. At any rate, this weapon has no no coal damage. No coal damage, and coal damage will mess with your bodies when you kill a monster. Coal damage it will explode potentially, and then you can't use a fine item on it. That's not good for a berserk bar, but in this case, we don't got that. So we're good. It's another weapon like Oath and Grief that has a lot of ED. Um, for in this case, though, you'd probably want it on a non-ethereal Colossus Blade. And remember, barbarians can use them one-handed, so that's a key. Uh, phase Blades, anyone can use one-handed, but the Barbarian himself can use this one-handed. So on a Berserk Barbarian, this is, uh, in a lot of ways, a pretty ideal weapon. Even has some damage reduction, life leech. Not going to help much with Berserk, but if you have to use Concentrate, it's got attack speed, it's got enhanced damage, it even has combat skills. So all that stuff is going to boost a lot of your damage um, for Berserk, and it's going to be nice stuff. It even has Prevent Monster Heals, so maybe you could even kill Declone with this if you could get some crushing blow elsewhere in your build. Uh, even with a Berserk Barb, it, it might be possible. So I, I like the idea of using that on a Berserk Barb for sure. And remember, early game on an Act 5 Mercenary, that's going to be that's going to be poppers. But obviously, it's not a late game item. Look at the runes. Just, 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 just look at them. Just look at them. Just look at them. So, wisdom. Wisdom, however, is probably one of my favorite rune words. I think this one is crazy. One class comes to mind with this rune word 100%, which is Amazon. Just look at it. Piercing attack. Attack rating, mana stolen per hit, cannot be frozen, which prevents you from getting frozen on any of those bow skills or any of those javelin throwing skills, which can all lower your attack speed. They all use attack speed, so getting frozen is pretty bad. And then mana per kill. A lot of abilities like Lightning Fury, um, heck, even Lightning Strike, any of those abilities, um, Exploding Arrow, Immolation Arrow, Freezing arrow, any of those things being buffed in this patch, they all require a lot of mana. They are mana cloppers. They just blow that mana, man. It's crazy. Um, they are helping with some of the mana costs and some of those skills, but it's still going to be pretty nasty mana cost wise. So if you guys are going to want to be able to sustain it, this thing is perfect. It also only requires a pull rune. I wouldn't say this is any kind of end game option though, because normally you're going to want some kind of damage helm in the end game. Uh, for any of those builds, the lightning builds, the fire builds, um, the cold builds, doesn't matter, night wings, uh, maybe one of the new rune words down below, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. And then, of course, there's uh, um, like the uh, lightning fury uh, zon as well, which is going to want griffins. So this isn't late game. However, if you are struggling with sustain early game like you normally do with these abilities, if you can just get your hands on a pull rune, which isn't that bad, you can get that from Nightmare Forge if you're lucky. Um, you're definitely going to want to find a three socketed helm and pop these into it. The piercing attack also means you could hit 100% pierce without razor tail. And uh, that's amazing stuff for all those abilities I mentioned. All those abilities have the potential to pierce. Um, I think most of them I mentioned, yeah. And uh, you got the Kanabi Frozen for the reduction on attack speed. You got the attack rating, which can be nice for leeching. Um, you could even use this as a to hybridize your damage for physical. You could put some points into strafe and do that as well, even early game. And uh, you're going to have sustain. It's got sustain like mad on it. It's just got all the perfect stats for it. Heck, it even has damage taking goes to mana if you get hit. So that's even more mana you can get. So all those mana consuming glugging builds... Good stuff. It's 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 set. Up. It's set. Up. It's gonna be good stuff for sure. Um, the other thing to mention, of course, is that because of the changes to throw barbarian, uh, you can get a hundred percent pierce pretty easy with this as well. So this could also be good on a throw barbarian uh, late game, and hopefully they'll uh, allow more weapons to have quantity or more quantity, more replenished quantity, so that throw barbarian um, isn't feeling bad when you just run out of quantity constantly have to go back to town and repair or you just simply can't use your ethereal weapons so at any rate um those are all very good uses of this for sure and uh definitely going to be the best uses i don't really see this as being a mercenary helm uh, just as a side note so that's probably not something you'd want to do with that one uh, this isn't a mercenary item either this is obsession this is my favorite rumored that they uh, they've created this thing's insane um 
a lot of a lot of the theme behind a lot of these rune words is uh, trying to use underutilized runes, trying to help underutilized things, trying to help out some of those mercenaries that aren't used as often, um, and trying to give more power to fire builds that probably need it because fire builds tend to struggle a little bit more, and uh, just overall creating more options. And these underutilized runes as well, like Zod. This is the only other rune word in the game now that has uses the Zod rune. Um, it's the rarest rune in the game, but people don't typically value it very high because you can only make a breath by dying with it, or you can put it in an ethereal item. And there's not a lot of ethereal items you'd actually want to put it in besides a breath of dying. There's, there's a few, to be fair. Um, like maybe like a five socket eth rune master, and there's definitely a lot of things for sure um, that I can possibly think of. But overall, not a lot of options with the Zod runes. So. It's really good they're creating this, and it's also cool that they're using some other very useful runes and getting some magic find off of this rune. Um, I see this rune word as being incredible for a lot of sorceress builds, but particularly Nova builds, possibly even Frost Nova or Nova or just regular Nova. Uh, maybe even more so regular Nova though, because there's not any like insane weapon items like Death's Fathom for like a cold Nova sorceress, but for a hybrid build, definitely. Go like double Nova, hula hoop sorceress. You can do whatever you want. Uh, after all these patch notes, if you get to my patch note video as well, where I went over everything, you can definitely hear some of my insights about all these cool hybrid builds you can create. But at any rate, Nova, this is going to be insane. Um, with all these stats, it is able to compete with uh, classic Ashuda spirit setups, like Ashuda's Temper plus Spirit. It also competes with Hodo plus Spirit. And in some ways it's better, like it gives you fire res here, maybe at the expense of a little bit more potential all res with some uh, with the Spirit Hodo setup. Um, and it even gives you like insane amounts of maximum life, which don't even exist on the Spirit Hodo setup. Um, you definitely lose some energy. You definitely lose a little bit of faster cast rate, but you even gain some FHR. And because it's a staff, you can even make it with, um, you can make it with staff mods, which have the sorceress skills on them. So I see this as an amazing sorceress weapon. If you can get like any kind of uh, like combination, like three to fireball, even just three to fireball, but like three to fireball plus three to fire mastery, that would be insane. And then you can get basically what is effectively a seven to fireball staff with 65 FCR. FHR, insane maximum life, so great survivability, and even magic find. One thing to mention is that on the Hodo Spirit setup, you can't even get Magic Find. You could on Ashuda's um, and some of the other ones, but it's actually impossible to get it on one of the more safe options. And this has all the survivability stats, pretty much, that the other two, that all the other combinations have. So using a staff actually makes sense. And then you don't have to worry about, of course, um, getting block locked at all. Of course, they have addressed that somewhat mechanically as well, uh, which is another note in the patches here, in, in the patch, but it's pretty cool stuff though. And one thing that I really love about this item though, probably the thing that I like the most is Weaken. Weaken is insane. Weaken means that you can have huge damage reduction and on a sorceress, you're typically teleporting and jumping to monsters all the time. Um, and that could be upwards of over 40% damage reduction based on the weakened changes they made on the Necromancer. Um, I don't think you can shop any staves you can get six sockets on. You're going to have to find it on the ground. But I think that's the least of your worries. As long as you can get the base of any kind, which you can even Larzic socket. You can Larzic socket these bases. You find them on the ground and you can get six sockets. And you find a Zodrin, you're good to go. Um, Crazy damage mitigation, honestly more so than maybe Hodo and Spirit. It's just crazy stuff. Uh, the maximum life is crazy too, so you don't even have to rely on things like Energy Shield. It's just uh, at least not too heavily. You can if you want. But you could even have like Energy Shield like pre-buffs on this thing. You don't even have to put a point in Energy Shield if you get a staff with like three to the skill you're looking for at Energy Shield. Uh, particularly the new Nova is going to be insane with this staff because of uh, how much the other item combinations work out. Uh, in terms of damage versus this thing. This thing's going to be nuts if you get like a pure Nova Sorceress. And there's so many other Sorceresses like Fireball that could definitely make a lot of use of this. So 
Um, definitely insane. I'm at, th this is how to re this is how to make a staff viable on a sorceress right here is to create this crazy liquid. So looking forward to it 100%. All right, and then Flickering Flame. If you're a fire build, Flickering Flame is for you. Um, the only major weaknesses of Flickering Flame is there is no magic find. It requires the same higher up runes as Hodo, which is pretty interesting. It's not too expensive because of that, though. Um, and honestly, it does more damage than Shaco. It's going to do in, in every fire scenario. It's kind of like the mini Griffins or Nightwings. It's kind of like the, uh, the alternate version. The only other like helm that had anything kind of like this or has anything kind of like this is Ravenlore. But it's only usable in Druids. It's a Druid-only helm. Ravenlore is better than this helm at its best in terms of damage, in terms of dealing damage and possibly overall across the board survivability with all resistances. Um, however, when it comes to any other fire build, this could be best in slot, including on a fire act three mercenary. Um, so it just does tons and tons of damage on anything. And on a fire druid, if you don't have a really good fire facet, really good raven lore uh, this can still work heck you could even make this in an antlers which means that you could get a six to fissure version which definitely gets very close to uh to overtaking raven lore the negative enemy res though is more impactful and making all the abilities useful not just fissure so it'd be pretty hard to find a helm where all the fire skills are on it but you can see the potential though uh, it's got a lot of potential for any of that stuff the act three mercenary any of the fire builds, we're talking like Holy Fire. Holy Fire is uh, Paladins are slated to be insanely powerful. Um, Fireball Sorceress, definitely a great use for this right here. Fireball Sorceress has never had a great damage helm. Um, in terms of anything better than like Shaco, Exploding Arrows on. All these builds that they're making viable that are already viable in the game. All these crazy good fire builds that people like to play and that do huge amounts of damage. Just going to be made more powerful with this build even has half freeze duration poison rate length reduction and it even gives you pretty much what is effectively uh near fire immunity obviously it's not gonna make you immune but um it's pretty crazy stuff resist fire aura is no joke it's gonna give you a ton of fire is and maximum fire is so you're not gonna have to worry about fire damage at all uh, the only downside is that typically fire characters don't farm areas where the monsters are doing lots of fire damage so it's kind of a weird mismatch because like let's say you're a you know a fire sorceress and whatnot the most fire damage might be in a place like Ravenkul or chaos you know you're thinking about high da fire damage stuff like council members um and of course like venom lords and things of that nature and they're all fire immune so or a lot of them are fire immune in the case of council members uh, when it comes to the council members and the Dark Lords before Mephisto, however, this would be incredible because then you would take no fire damage and then you could farm Mephisto and you could kill the council members and the Dark Lords because they're cold and they're lightning immune, respectively. So uh, there's a lot of potential there for sure. Um, definitely. Um, even making use of the fire res on top of all that fire damage. However, you know, it's not as common. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird situation. But yeah, um, feel free to use this. Uh, Vex rune, not, not too expensive stuff. You could even use a Hodo and this item on a Fire Sorceress and then have two Vexes and two Cold Rooms. You'll be good to go. Uh, I'd say the only major weakness is like no Istrin potential. And of course, uh, if you're on a Fire Druid, you can get even more negative enemy fire is. And there might be other stats that this is lacking, like damage reduction and just overall life and stuff. You might, might want more than fire. Uh, the other thing to note is that on any build with spirit that's lacking fire is uh, this is definitely welcome for sure. All right, uh, mist, mist bow and crossbow. This is probably the weird uncle of all the new rune words they've probably produced. Um, in in theory, it would seem like it would be a really good rune word um, because it has concentration or it has a lot of damage. It does a lot of things like that. Um, but it is outclassed by virtually every endgame option, despite requiring both a cham and a goal. Um, 
That being said, though, it would be insanely good for like a hybrid strafe elemental zone if you get like a bow with a five socketed bow, which by the way, five socketed bows aren't used that often. So they took into account bases that aren't used often. Helms. Six socketed swords for runewards. Three socketed swords. Claws, obviously not. Six socketed staff. These types of bases aren't used often for rune words. And they, you know, they took the runes that aren't used, and bam, there you have it. Cham and Gull. Nobody likes those runes, right? Well, now they're actually quite useful. And of course, you have the base, the five socketed bow. Most of the rune words are four socket. So it, and, and of course, it's even easier to get a five socketed bow because you can. A uh, Larzix socket, a white bow, even with three bow and crossbow skills, and you can get a six skill bow with 100% piercing attack, which means you don't even need a level pierce at all to get 100%. And then on top of that, you get a lot of survivability. You get freeze target from the all resistances. I like how they typed all resistances twice here. It's it just happens once. That's it. That's just a that's just a typo thing. But yeah, it's really good stuff. It's got increased attack speed, so you can use it on elemental builds on yourself, and you can use those uh, very high damage bows like Grand Matron's bows uh, or Matriarchal bows to even do a lot of physical damage. So you can hybridize like Strafe and Elemental um, or uh, in Elemental approaches on a boson for sure. Um, you get a lot of skills, and you get a lot of enhanced damage, and you get a lot of the enhanced damage added from Concentration or on top of it. However, you can also use it on an Act 1 Mercenary as well um, for a damage or that is an alternative to, let's say, Might on an Act 2 Mercenary. And then you can put, like, let's say, Faith on yourself. Um, however, if we're being 100%, if we're being 100% real, um, this bow will never outclass the very best bow and bow combinations. So, for instance, a Pride on a might or a mercenary and a faith on a pure physical damage boson will always outclass this bow. So even though it requires a cham and a ghoul, which might not be very easy to find, the cham and the ghoul are a little easier to buy or to find simply because you know they're cheaper, but it's not gonna be as good as those like jaw ohm rune words. So those really good rune words or the sir low cham, those really expensive rune words are still going to be stronger. Uh, you, you you just can't make this stronger than that, no matter what. Um, it, it's a great kind of like mid-late game option. It's kind of like you, you you maybe found the wall of runes, you got unlucky, you didn't find your brood, and here you go. You got it. And you can make something that works and that's very strong with this. And then everything else is good stuff as well. Um... It's got a lot of good options. You could even use this theoretically on a non boson because it has piercing attacks. So if you want to, um, if you want to use this, let's say on a, um, I don't know, like you could make it on a Widowmaker, a Widowmaker character. You can use this on a. You could use a bow barb or something. You can kind of just mess around, and uh, you can. <laughs> You can use a bow with a non-Amazon if you want because you can pierce with it. So uh, it's not going to be extremely good or anything, but it could be fun. So in addition to Act 1 Mercenaries and potentially using it as a hybrid bow or even just like a mid-late game physical damage bow, um, it's a great option. But uh, don't don't think of this as like an endgame item despite requiring the second rarest rune in the game. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not best in slot in any of those ways at all so it's not even best in slot for elemental because if you think about it um, ice is better it just gives you percent damage and negative enemy res uh hand of justice and phoenix are better more negative enemy res uh that stuff is going to make those elemental builds hit even harder so it just doesn't quite exceed any of that stuff so that, that that's kind of what it does it's kind of like a mid late game option it's great on a budget uh when you don't don't have crazy runes and you can make a physical or a physical hybrid character work very well and that is it for my rune word review i hope you guys learned more about all the different ways you could use these new rune words for the first ladder on d2r
We don't know when the latter is yet, but we do know the PTR is on January 25th. I hope you will be uh, joining and testing alongside. Well, you can find out even maybe even more uses for these and, of course, all the other changes on D2R. This is awesome stuff. I am very excited to see what this ladder brings us. I'm going to be playing hardcore, trying to go to 99 on a Sorceress. Of course, so we'll have the timestamps for each of these win words that we went over in the description in the first pinned comment. And you can always check out all my build guides on YouTube at d2.rackful.gg. If you like this video and you thought it helped you understand maybe some awesome, cool new ways to use these win words and gave you confidence that they might actually be useful at some point in the game and exactly when they're useful, how they're useful, why they're useful, and all the other stuff um, that you can do with them. Of course, you can always uh, drop a subscription and let me know in the comments below what you thought or if you thought of any other awesome uses for these words as well anyways dark humility over now see you guys next time